Hello travelers. In this video, we do a little something different here. Um, we're gonna, I just found out about this too, so you guys can come along with me. It's called the Anunnaki. It's a 3,000 year old civilization, and apparently it's coming back. It's uh, 3,000 years are up, and it's pretty crazy. So I wanted to dig into this with you guys. First, let's get a little idea what this is, because I don't even know. I just found out about this, so. Come on along in the ride, we'll find out together, right? The name Anunnaki is derived from An, the Sumerian god of the sky. The name is variously written Anuna, Anuna Kane, Anunana, sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm new to this, meaning princely offspring or offspring of An. The Anunnaki were believed to be the offspring of An and his consort, the earth goddess, Ki. Samuel Noah Kramer identifies Key with the Sumerian mother goddess Nin Hersok, stating that they were originally the same figure. The oldest of the Anunnaki was Enlil, the god of air, and chief god of the Sumerian pantheon. The Sumerians believed that until Enlil was born, heaven and earth were inseparable. Then Enlil cleft heaven and earth in two and carried away the earth, while his father An carried away the sky. Very, it's a ancient Egyptian group of people, and supposedly, I, I have a video that we could probably just get to. I just wanted to go into like what this was because I have no idea either, guys. The Anunnaki are chiefly mentioned in literally texts, and very little evidence to support the existence of any cult of them has yet been unearthed. This is likely due to the fact that each member of the Anunnaki had his or her own individual cult separate from the others. Similarly, no representations of the Anunnaki as a complete group have yet been discovered, although a few depictions of two or three individual members together have been identified. And the reason I'm talking about this, and it sounds crazy, I, I usually don't go in this angle, but yeah, here's some pictures. It's like an ancient civilization that they're lining up with aliens space travel whatever you want to call this it's so old that nobody believes it but they've come back and that's what i want to make this video about so here's um the basis of this we'll get right to it i don't want to waste your time here no wasting time right let's listen to this this is a kgb russian dude Basically, I guess he gave this interview and then after he was killed. So let's listen to it. Well, I conscripted to Russian military. My view is this is sort of Russian equivalent to United States Army, MOS. I was uh, like an intelligence scout. I became very fascinated with gathering information and, that, and espionage. When I leave Army, I go to KGB, but they turn me down. The guy's just talking about himself a little I say, bit. Turned you down? Yes, they did. They said I had good military service, but they were recruiting only two types of people. Those with college degree and a few for suicide missions. Agent told me if they recruit me, then I would be sent to a mission and probably not come home. So I went to college. Mm -hmm. Probably a wise choice, given the opportunities you had at the time. What did you study in school? I graduated from St. Petersburg State University with master's degree in political science, focusing on strategic arms and control studies. When I graduated, I got back to KGB and uh, say, here's my military record, here's my diploma, give me a job. So they checked me out and they said, okay, maybe. I passed all assessment tests and training with the uh, regiment, was introduced into the KGB. And then I worked as junior analyst in Moscow. I hoped for excitement, but job was very, very boring desk job. This guy just given us his credentials, yeah. like who this guy is. But one year later, I catch a lucky break. I personally exposed an MI6 and a Mossad agent who had infiltrated into the Ministry of Defense. So they sent me to London as an assistant to the military attaché. Very, very nice ladies in London. Huh? Sure. 
And uh, after that, the people are chain of command. Take notice of my achievement and promoted me to KPSID, this Special Investigation Division. And this is where I began to learn the things really going on in this world, like Nibiru and Anunnaki. No? Before we go there, it's my understanding that you were terminated from the KGB and did not leave of your own free will. Would you care to elaborate on that? I, it was a termination. It was not really a termination. No one ever really leaves the KGB. I was relieved of duty because I had learned so much that I was more you know, useful outside than inside of agents. The way I see it, President Putin wanted me to expose the truths to the world. As an active KGB agent, I could never do that. But officially, free of the agency's trust, I could disclose sensitive information. It should be obvious that President Putin is protecting me. It would certainly seem so. So just to clarify, President Putin, you believe, is using you as an instrument of disclosure. Why would he not just do it himself? Ah. Mike, he cannot present certain issues because he has many enemies. Some topics are too controversial. The fifth column in government and outside world would say that he is like on a wild goose chase, chase in the near uh, abroad. On, yeah, let's say he's crazy, Syria, like Syria. me right now, for making this video. I'm crazy. That we are in Syria not to eliminate the terrorist threat, but to pursue some imaginary enemies from space. No? Then the Washington Post would say that President Putin has caught some contagious mental illness or disease when President Trump sneezed. Then Moscow Times and the other Russian pro-NATO liberal papers would all scream out, it's a contagion. Putin has gone mad like Trump. The fifth oh. column, could you give us a little more information? Uh, look, some hopeful politicians and journalists and businessmen also are working for the West and would not miss the opportunity. You know, president popularity is great, but his enemies are just waiting for their chance to get him. I'm not the only one, you know. President Putin is using others like me. He wants to disclose information he cannot. Information like what your government calls the Anunnaki threat? Among other things, yes. Let's focus there for a second. To start, can you tell us when your government learned of this race and give us a little background on how Putin determined that they were, shall we say, not very friendly? Sometimes and late. Yeah, this guy like gave this interview, and then I guess he was killed after the interview. And this race is like three thousand years old, and they claim to like make a deal that they wouldn't invade Russia if Putin agreed with them. But they're like here. To, it almost sounded like Nope, that movie Nope with the aliens that came and like started harvesting the humans. Creepy. But here it goes. Two thousand twelve, and I cannot remember the exact date. You know? We began receiving intelligence reports of extraterrestrial, you know, extraterrestrials in conflict areas like Syria, Afghanistan, Georgia, Ukraine. You know? And it's not just these dudes. There's guys, I'll show you in the comments if I remember at the end of this, that like I was looking through them. There's guys like that were in the military over there that were just saying stuff like, I don't understand why the go the U.S. government was looking into archaeology while we were over there, and it, like, all overlaps with, like, ancient mythology and archaeology. It's crazy. May reports surface of extraordinarily tall humanoids, three to five meters. I'm sure you've heard of the Kandahar giant. That's just one of many. What we learn is that this race of evil ETs they seek out hotspots, places of conflict where they can camouflage themselves within the carnage of war. So they appear at battle sites and take corpses of dead and sometimes of the living. Peace. And that's tomorrow war. I'll keep going on this. Don't worry. I'm going to link it below. But check this out. And this is what's going on. Like as of today. What is it? 
September 26, 2022. Horrible thing going on over there. We all know right now what Ukraine and Russia. And look at this. You guys, what the fuck is that? That's what that guy just said. Okay, they so intervene when like hot spots, me. when things are so hot that it would be undetectable. There's no, there's no, there's no way that's much. It's not a mountain. There's no way. Look, mountains, mountain top, mountain, mountain top, city, city, city. Where's my thing? Where's my thing? Like honestly, I'm still. Is it the weather balloon, right? Yeah, I wish it was a weather balloon, right? Look at this. Have you seen this? I swear on God, like, I have no fucking experience with Photoshop or whatever the fuck. I work on video. There's no way. You can examine this video how much you ever want. This is on I this guy's TikTok. Here. I don't think you could do this through a phone like this. Like this? Bro, what the fuck is that? Like, look, look. There's a plane. There's a plane because we have an airport here. Like, to the left, to the right. Right of me. What is that? What the fuck is that? Propeller plane, even. Like, what? Wait, airplane? What the fuck? Airplane's making the noise, this one. Yeah. It's gonna land there, like, there's an airport there. His camera's all over the place, but this guy's obviously very normal, right. so it's cool. What the fuck? Oh, this is not a... Is it a weather balloon? Look at the shape, though. There ain't no fucking weather balloon. And our balloons are still... Oh my god. It's man. huge. What the fuck is that? Zoom out. This is going on. Like, now. If that's a UFO, like Medellin is a city full of cell phones and people like fucking photographing shit, so we fucking hear about it. Like, this is the first time in my life that such a thing is happening to me, like, uh, like a UFO sighting or whatever. Yeah. I'm a huge fucking skeptic, like huge, but also like want to believe, you know. Uh, So there's that. And this isn't like, this just came up today or this week. This has been going on. People have been talking about this forever. Stories? No, I don't report it because it is easy to explain as battle-induced acute stress and hallucinations. How convenient. If these events, however, have happened beyond Russia's sovereign borders in Syria and other nations, why does Putin care? Because unlike Western leaders, President Putin recognizes this burning or great threat to humanity. If we do not fight them in Syria, we will have to fight them in Stalingrad. Stalingrad? I thought Stalin was not to be mentioned in the new Russia under President Putin. I was in Paris and they had Stalingrad metro station. So you Westerners think that you can have Stalingrad and us Russians cannot have Stalingrad. That's nonsense. Okay, well, thank you for clarifying that. And I would never presume to demand political correctness from Russians when I hate it here in America. Anyway, these Anunnaki, what is their disposition? How strong are they? Unfortunately, it is hard, hard to track exactly how many Anunnaki are currently in this area. In the kill one, many more have seemed to appear. Okay, now that we're getting into your nation's efforts to eradicate the Anunnaki, can you tell us how exactly Putin plans to defeat a technologically and potentially numeric numerically superior foe? Stop. Some things I can, can say, some I cannot, yeah. Early on we discovered that Anunnaki were res resilient to small arms fire, like Kalashnikov bullets, yeah. Usually they do not work on them. President Putin... I would say secret, he gave a secret executive order to organize nationwide effort to defeat this monster. Military base in Ural. You know Ural Mountains? Right. It was repurposed as a top secret 
EP, like extraterrestrial research center, to train Russian special services and to develop technology capable of reducing these unknown. I see. I presume you're referring to the Moskoya facility, and I'd like to return to that in a minute. Can yes. you tell me about Russia's earliest skirmishes with the Anunnaki and the outcome of those engagements? At first, the outcome was bad, very bad. We did not know their defense technologies. We received reports we sent steps now to chase them through vast networks of caves in Syria. We lost many combats there. Our bullets often bounce out of them. You know? It's going to some commercial or something. Let me get back into this. It was really hard to find this interview too, guys. Like, here, let me jump in. Plasma-based weapons and also use energy spears to screw our fighting brothers. We lost maybe 200 men before finding in that finding a you know place in their armor where where we can shoot. Uh, a tragic loss of Russia's fighting men. Uh, how did you? How did your nation discover a weakness? In the Anunnaki. Yeah, yeah, that's during an engagement. One Anunnaki mistakenly wounded another, and uh, a Russian survivors of this battle captured the wounded beast and took it to Mezgori. Our uh, top scientists tried to interrogate it, but no luck. We could not understand their language. We speak in chirps and chirps. Sorry. Yeah. Ancient. If it could understand us, it never let us know. Since interrogation not possible, we're doing best next best thing, science. So we exposed the Anunnaki to extreme heat, extreme cold, acid, even though it took poison. Nothing worked. What? Finally, after many months, we discovered two weaknesses. Acoustic weapons of certain frequencies cause Anunnaki much pain and then make them... Dude, this is all my videos we've been making with the Manchurian Candidate. We've been talking about vibrations, electromagnetic force, frequency. Fall to the ground. Frequency. Also, they can be killed by energy-based weapon like a laser, a 10 kilowatt laser, powerful enough to vapor a single enough. And this happened. Uh, that test subject died. Unfortunately... These weapons right now are large and must be vehicle mounted. Our training troops with handheld versions, but right now these are only strong enough to stun the smaller Anunnaki, but certainly not all. Fascinating. Do you know how many encounters have Russian special services had with the Anunnaki? Yes, yes. Uh, seven that I'm aware of. This does not count the recent bombings of Anunnaki enclaves in Syria. You say bombings. Bombs, in my mind, are considered conventional weapons. Yes, yes. A special ordinance developed by Ministry of Defense. They do no technical schematics, but in addition to you know, explosion, like the, the weapons release energy pulse on detonation that damages Anunnaki brains. Well, if that being said, and that if that's true, then Putin should have no problem wiping all the existing Anunnaki off the face of the planet. If only it was so easy. Anunnaki have a unique form of transportation. They use portals which only they can see. They teleport instantaneously from one, one location to another. Also, other videos we did, they clearly mastered... Uh speed of light and teleportation through Stargate or whatever you want to call it. If they see the attack coming, they can strike back and this has happened or they can vanish through a portal and reappear somewhere else. Maybe thousands of, of miles away. We speculate that the portals are fixed location instead installed by the Anunnaki. In previous years, yeah. And we have no idea how many of these portals are on the planet. It would be millions for all of them, maybe even back to their homeworld. So I'm going to be talking about Stargates or Babs from the book, The Anunnaki Final Warning. Yes, this is crazy. 
going to Stargate Space Travel. I'm really just trying to get the interview for you guys. There's a lot of good references. I'm going to link this in the details below just so you guys can watch it in your leisure. But I'm just trying to get the KGB guy that was like killed for talking about this shit. It's in the Bible, and man. Based Wait, on what you know, where is that? Those involvement. It's in Revelation. And no man in heaven nor in earth, neither under the earth, was able to open the book, neither to look thereon. And every creature which is in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and such as are in the sea, and all that are in them, heard a saying, a blessing, and honor, and glory, and power, be unto him that sitteth upon the throne, and unto the Lamb forever and ever. I don't understand the Bible, I and mean, this is another one. And based on what you know, where is that? <sighs> Russian intelligence believes the Anunnaki are natives of the fifth and seventh planet of the Nibiru system. How did a Putin or whomever with the Ministry of Defense come, come, or you come by that information? Because they told us so. Some clarification is needed here, Strelnikov. Earlier, a few minutes ago, you said communication with the Anunnaki yeah. was impossible. So they couldn't talk? Uh, that being so, how was this information delivered? Yes, in, in that statement, I'm referring only to the captured one, the captured Anunnaki, who would not, or, would, or could not communicate. But like I said, we had many engagements with these evil creatures. Not, Sometimes ago, we, after we killed nearly 20, 200 of them, in a fight, an Anunnaki emissary reached out to President Putin and offered him an ultimatum. A commander. An officer. Wow. This time he spoke perfect Russian. Where did this contact happen? It materialized near Ministry of Defense headquarters and demanded to speak with Putin. Very tall, four meters, translucent skin phasing in and out of existence. Mike, um, I'm out of time for this today, for this talk. Uh, no problem, Astronikov. You do not know how grateful I am to you for sharing. Wow, he got pushed off the mic. I bet you. With us, this incredibly important story. I hope that you will agree to chat with me again, as there's certainly a lot more information about the Anunnaki to cover, and yes. I would like to conclude with that topic before we dive into other topics it's hard to doubt we most of us don't even know like who our great grand like our second great grandparents were so like i can't say this isn't a thing or a race of people like i really can't i have no all right mike i will be in touch with you all right well hey, thank you very much uh, stromakov you have a good afternoon stromakov thank give you me a call good all afternoon right. ladies and gentlemen this is of course we're not done it goes to another one Looks like this one is some video. I remember, guys, this KGB Strelnikov guy, he he died, like, right after he gave this interview, I guess. Or the second one. I'd like to start right at that point. Could you, do you remember, what was the ultimatum? Uh, yes, my God, like I said, this villainous race has... Be advised to take a grain of salt and use discernment to what this, uh person is saying we know that there are benevolent and benevolent beings agreeable and disagreeable but they're trying to uh categorize or lump everyone as evil beings ability to instantaneously transport from one location to another turn me off guys so you can see this portals that only they can see anunnaki appeared near the mod and demanded to speak with president putin I am uh, foggy on some details, but what I know is this. Arrangements were made between Putin and Anunnaki to meet at Putin's mansion on the Black Sea coast near the village of Paraskovyevka. At this meeting, the Anunnaki delivered the ultimatum. Leave us alone, we'll leave you alone or else perish with the rest of the world. Wow. Uh, so what you're essentially saying Jesus. is that the Anunnaki offered Putin peace in exchange for, shall we say, uh, agreeing to participate in a non-intervention agreement? 
something like that, but it's much more shocking. The Anunnaki told him that in exchange for not interfering with their plans, they would leave Russia alone and not even set foot on Russian soil without explicit permission. The Anunnaki also said they would tell Putin how to survive Nibiru passing through the solar system. On the other hand, if Putin refused to offer the offer, the Anunnaki said Russia would be the first to fall and its people would be enslaved and taken as food. Um, holy smokes. Assuming that to be true, yeah. what the fuck? it's hard to imagine why Putin declined such a being a a generous offer. Um, wow. Why would Putin, why, why would Putin deny that? Because Mike Putin does not trust them. He may be an optimist, but he is not stupid. He figured that the Anunnaki would dishonor any agreement. These creatures are devilish and man manipulative. Yeah. So Putin told them to go away. We do not want you here. He told leave the planet and never come back. You know what the Anunnaki told him? Uh, no, but I'm hoping you'll tell me. The Anunnaki said to Putin, Earth is our planet, not yours. We are the ones who seeded the Earth with strands of life. He said that they grew all life on Earth. As in uh, a giant victory dish. Humans, the Anunnaki said, belong to them, just as your mother's chicken belonged to her. Wow. So, every 3,000 and 600 years, he will take, they return to harvest. Harvest what? Us. We are uh, a little more than food and slave labor for them. <laughs> no. Uh, theological repercussions aside, that is a frightening thought to comprehend. What is, how did the Anunnaki respond to Putin's answer? The Anunnaki said, uh, You've been warned and left. And yet, no man, no massive Anunnaki force has invaded Russia. Mm, at least not yet. One thing I really don't understand. If the Anunnaki have the ability to instantly travel anywhere they want using these portals, I mean, why... Why haven't they just sent a brigade of soldiers into Moscow? If the Anunnaki who wanted to speak to Putin showed up at the MOD, obviously they must have these portals in Russia already. Yeah. Uh, for every answer we know, there are two we do not. It is possible <laughs> the case can accommodate only a certain number of Anunnaki right. before needing a retract. We right. just don't have all the answers, but Keep in mind that the Anunnaki do not just attack military, they work behind the scenes. Evil machinations with human beings corrupted by Anunnaki's sinister agendas. If they can infiltrate government positions and influence law, they need not show up with guns, please. Hmm. Fascinating. Does Putin believe right now, does he think that the... Anunnaki have infiltrated the Russian government? Mm, no. But he believes other nations have been compromised. What nations, for instance? For instance, yours. Putin believes the Anunnaki have uh, uh, infiltrated the White House? Mm, not sure about now, but under the Obama administration, many Anunnaki roamed the White House corridors. I really don't have more information on that. Well, interestingly okay. enough, you're not the you're not the first person to make such a suggestion. I haven't heard about the Anunnaki infiltrating the White House, or so others have talked about another race called the Reptilians, but we're not going to go there right now. Let's step in a different direction. According to you, Russian forces have clashed at least six times with the Anunnaki, resulting in many deaths on both sides. Where is the photographic or video evidence of the engagements? People like me and others who report on this topic, we take huge hits to our credibility because we don't have that hard evidence. I'm sure it must exist in an era where 
uh, Big Brother watches everything, where soldiers have body cameras. So there should be footage or pictures of these Anunnaki or Anunnaki corpses. What do you say to that? Yes, Matt, I uh, realize this is a big problem. Any footage is classified at the moment at the uh, most secret level. Even I have not seen it. Does it exist? Probably, yes. Keep in mind that lack of thereof also affects my credibility, yeah. Yeah, you see that. I spare what I can. As to corpses of Anunnaki, there are none. The Anunnaki biology is most strange. Their uh, insides contain a corrosive uh, bile that at, at the time of death literally dissolves both endo and exoskeleton. Only skulls have uh, been known to survive this process and photographs of Anunnaki had bones on the internet. All right. And I have and I have seen photos of on the internet that, uh, of elongated skulls that many say are Anunnaki, but you know, digressing, I've known you for many years and I absolutely believe that you give the that you're given the best possible information to which you've been exposed. However, as a journalist I just I have to question everything. You've mentioned that Anunnaki use plasma-based weapons and energy spheres and that their bodies liquefy at time of death. Now, these are conventions of two popular American science fiction franchises, uh, specifically the Predator and Alien series, respectively. It seems a bit convenient uh, that the Anunnaki lore mimics these fictional inventions. What do you think? Michael, the margin or level of separation between fiction and reality is very narrow. I have never seen uh, these movies. I've heard about them, but I've never seen them. I do not like, like movies. But uh, the technologies used by the Anunnaki are real and are deadly. Ministry of Defense worked tirelessly to understand their technology and find a way to counter it. Thank you. Wow. You previously said, to your knowledge, other nations do not take the Anunnaki threat as seriously as does Putin, or if at all. Now, it has been suggested to me that Trump and Putin are in a secret alliance to defeat them, and that all the current rabid anti-Russian sentiment going on right now is a dog and pony show to distract people from that, uh, from Trump and Putin actually working together. What do you say about that? Uh, look, Michael, I wish this to be true. I wish your American president would take this threat and as seriously as does President Putin. I have, ne uh, I have seen no evidence showing cooperation between them. All right. If they're working together, Michael, then the rouse is so elaborate that even President Putin doesn't know he's working with Trump to fight the Nazis. Okay, so you're saying it's not true? That's what I said. Yeah. I like this guy. Do you think Putin stands a chance of winning this war on his own? Mm -hmm. I think... I don't know. Uh, mm -hmm. What I think doesn't matter, Mike. Okay, then moment. that's a no? Mm, I didn't say that. Uh, please don't put words in my mouth. All right, like, fair like enough. I want to make sure cool. I get, we get you accurately. Uh, let's veer in a different direction. When it comes to the Anunnaki, they've been described looking in various different forms of configurations, giants 7 to 15 feet tall, uh, tall skin, I'm sorry, tan skin, translucent skin, some even say they shimmer in and out of existence, uh, kind of almost incorporeal. Uh, some say bipedal. I've heard reports of there being quadruped, quadruped Anunnaki. Does your government have any idea why there is such a, why these reports vary so widely? Uh, yes, Mike. Uh, the Anunnaki breed with other races and not just humans. 
The offspring are hybrid, hybrid monsters inheriting traits from the male and Naki and the female of whatever species it, it impregnates. <laughs> this uh, accounts for the dis discrepancies. So, look, make no mistake, the Anunnaki genes are the dominant ones and even half-breeds are deadly and dangerous and as much a threat to Earth as a full-blooded Anunnaki. Wow. So the Anunnaki uh, males are breeding with uh, females of other species. I assume the females are not willing participants. Mm, correct. Uh, they are victims of the Anunnaki genetic experimentation process. Do you or ha have you learned from your government how many races uh, the Anunnaki might have mingled with? I know it's a question out there. Uh, this I do not know, but more than just humans. All right. Mm, look. I have to go now, Mike. I have emergency. We'll right. talk again. All right. Well, Strelnikov, I very much appreciate your your time that you take to come on and provide this information to myself and to the audience out there. Uh, do me a favor, please. Shoot me an email when you have time to talk again. I do want to continue closing, you know, to continue to close out our conversations on the Anunnaki and then dive into some other topics that I know you can help shed light on. Uh, thanks very much, Strelnikov. You're welcome. All right. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Wow. All right. So that was, that was pretty crazy here. Let me bring me back, guys. I'm still with you. Don't worry. I just wanted you to be able to see that cool Russian guy. Jesus Christ, man. So you guys obviously can form your own opinions. You're free. But let me send you off on this little thing. Whew. It's disturbing, right? Makes a lot of sense, though. The earliest known usages of the term Anunnaki come from the inscriptions written during the reign of Gudea, 2124 BC, in the third dynasty of Ur, or Ur. In the earliest text, the term is applied to the most powerful and important deities of the Sumerian pantheon, the descendants of the sky god, and this group of deities, sorry if I'm saying some of these words wrong, probably include the seven gods who decree An, Enlil, Enki, Ninhursag, Nana, Utu, or Utu, Udu, and Inanna. Although certain deities are described as members of the Anunnaki, no complete list of names has survived. Crazy. Let me let me know what you guys think in the comments below. I'm gonna link this thing just because it's crazy and i never thought i'd be covering something like this but i kind of had to so thanks for coming along this ride guys don't forget to like and subscribe ring a ding ding my bell and i will see you guys in the next video